So we, uh, now being part of the Reformation Month, I think we have been looking at uh, uh, doctrines of grace, um, especially with related to the tulip gospel or the doctrines of grace. And we're looking at the various acronyms of the tulip. And today is our third session where we will be looking at the limited atonement. I just wanted to go back a bit and uh, know, just uh, revise, you know, why this, uh, this whole uh, uh, doctrines of grace was actually started off. It was uh, basically to, you know, uh, to counter the false teaching that was going on by a person named called Jacob Arminus, and that's where we get the name called as Armenian theology. And uh, if, you, if you remember, we were talking about how this theology was attacking the very sovereignty of God. It was somehow trying to put man in with the equal space with God, where they were saying that, you know, where they were denying the original sin and saying that man still has some goodness and man has what they call it as a free will to choose whether they believe in God or they do not believe in God. And uh, and they have the ability to do that. And this is where, uh, you know, and that's how a person is saved or whether he is condemned to hell. And so all his life, you know, he has to then struggle to ensure that he keeps up the faith enough so that God should be pleased by his works which is absolutely contrary to a God who is sovereign, a God who is gracious, and a God who is merciful. And countering those you know, allegations, I think one of the things that I was saying is the important factor, the point that we have to look at is that how the sovereignty of God is being challenged. And one more thing that I was also wanting you to focus is whatever uh, that God has done, you know, most of the times we have a very high view of ourselves and very low view of God. We think, you know, God is dependent upon us. We think that God is, you know, you know, he did something and now you know, he created the world. Everything was perfect unless till Adam failed and, uh, you know, God was surprised by that failure and then as a patch arrangement, you know, he sent his son and other things. So these are the wrong processes and to counter that we started defining what uh, what happened and this is where we came to the first point calling and terming as a total depravity or also known as the original sin where a man because of the sin of Adam and because God says to Adam the day you will sin thou shalt surely die there was a death and that death resulted in a spiritual death immediately and later it was translated into a physical death and um, and the, and and due to which we are now spiritually dead, and yes, we have a free will to do what it is, but that free will is now tainted with sin. So every decision that we make is always wrong. Every decision that we hold on to, thinking that you know we are doing the right thing, whether it's glorifying God or trying to understand God, you know, it is a wrong thing, and that is the reason why. Very quickly, I just wanted to talk, you know, it is so corrupted that man started creating his own gods. And this is, apart from Christianity, this is beyond Christianity, that how it has affected that uh, I think in Isaiah it is spoken and said, you know, how uh, a man makes a, takes a wood, he makes a god out of it, he worships it, and at the same time with the same amount of wood, he then he burns it to keep himself alive. In a way, uh, just condemning that you know man is so corrupt that he has done it and there is nothing and there is nothing has happened you know a lot many times we might think that no this is true for those people who are out of uh, the realm of christianity but even within the realm of christianity there are a lot of religious people if you could look in their lives we realize that how depraved they are and uh, you know they claim to you know, know god understand god know the scripture but yet at the same time you know, uh, they they are away from God. Um, and because of this total depravity, we can very clearly say, and this is what uh, Paul is talking in Romans, where he's condemning the whole world and saying that everybody is sinful. Nobody, no, there is none righteous. There is none who seeks God. That's what the scripture says. So it was right if God wanted to sell, send the whole of humanity to hell because of one sin, 
and we and we also saw that how uh, the you know the total depravity talks about imputation how the sin of uh, Adam was imputed unto us that we were born with that sin and how later God provided a way of salvation and this was through Christ through his atonement and then and how God is going to then uh, you know uh, impute the righteousness of Christ unto us and remove our sin so that is what was we, we looked at in terms of the total depravity and then we also looked at you know that yes God is righteous when we can say that everybody deserves to go to hell but god in his mercy but god in his uh, grace he decided to choose few and again we have to realize that this is again was for his own glory and these are the select few people whom we call as elect of god whom god chose before the foundation of the world and that is the reason why it is unconditional in that sense that you know god chose them not because you know we had some kind of uh, you know some kind of a goodness or not because we were uh, born of uh, of a particular you know nation and not because of you know by our own strength that we did it and you know this is what john uh, uh, john chapter 1 if you look at i believe uh, verse 16 it says you know that uh, those who believed that god were called the children of god who were not born of the flesh not of the uh, not of the flesh not of the blood and uh, i think not not of the will so if you look at all these three factors you now we can see that, that we have made to believe the christ we have been made to uh, look unto christ not because of our own doing but god chose before the foundation of the world and again why did he choose us the bible does not clearly state but in ephesians we can see he did all this for his own glory he did all this so that he might glorify himself in this world through the elect uh, redeeming them and now we come to the third point and in which uh where we say that you know god i was talking about uh, god paying the price for our sin and we come to the poor, third point which is known as a limited atonement that the l of the tulip gospel now this particular instance is very much you know debated it is it is not easily accepted uh there are people uh, you know i was talking about tulip gospel is also called as calvinism or five point of five points of calvinism there are a lot of people who call themselves three point calvinists or four point calvinists and it could be you know uh, it is because uh, they might agree on other points of the calvinism but not certain points and if you look at it uh, the uh, one of the major contention that they have is about the limited atonement now what does the reform Uh, faith talks about it says that the atonement uh, that christ paid uh, for for the death by his death on the cross was limited only for his elect it was limited only for his elect and not for the whole world now there is there is an issue with that because a lot of people question saying that are you trying to say that you know god's uh, atonement was uh, christ atonement was not sufficient to save the whole world but was uh, was not sufficient for the whole world that's the reason why god chose only few people and that's why he died only for those few people um if, if and, and that is the reason why there is a lot of you know uh, opposition for this uh, thought but what we're saying is yes god's uh, jesus that was sufficient for all it it was definitely sufficient for the whole world but at the same time it was only applied only for his elect for a specific reason and just to and why do we say just to understand that let us look at atonement let us look at this uh, what uh, the atonement looks at and and uh, it, it, the people who try to uh, you know debate the people those who have an issue with that the reason why they have an issue is because they clearly don't understand what atonement is 
the, if you look at other opposite camp of arminianism what they say is uh, you know god died for everybody and uh, and their ideology is more centered around the fact that you know uh, the death of christ only made a way for salvation the death of christ only made a way for salvation while the reformed faith says that you know the death of christ paid exactly uh, like did not make a way for salvation but it actually paid for your salvation so let us look at atonement let us try to understand more about atonement what atonement is and then one of the important point even before we get into what atonement is uh, and we look at atonement means uh, christ to atone to pay for our sins now let us look at why there was a necessity for uh, for the death uh, for the death of christ or why was there a necessity for an atonement if you look at that uh, we all know that the day adam sinned the day adam committed the grievous sin you know uh, and we uh, we do not understand the you know uh, like uh, it was not that god was surprised when adam you know sinned he did not say oh no i gave him everything a perfect environment you know everything was so perfect all he had to do was to avoid eating from that tree you know it it is it was not about eating from that tree the sin was a sin of disobedience which was much more grievous because it was against god man chose to think that he could also become like god this is the same thing the same sin that even the devil committed it is the same sin when he when he looked upon himself that he said uh, i can be like god as well and sim- and this is the same offer that he gives to the eve he says you know the day that you eat of this fruit you shall become like him and this is exactly what happened when we, when we said um, we were a lot of and but at the same time we might also argue saying okay fine it, it, it you know adam disobeyed and if you look at it god also provided a way of you know covering adam's nakedness once he was naked why could not god then go ahead and just forgive you know i am sure you know we could have just like a you know like a eraser god could just erase out the sin and say that's fine it's all right at the end of the day you know we have to look at the attributes of god yes god is a god of love god is a god of mercy and he can always forgive and but we we have to remember yes god is a god of mercy he is willing to forgive but we also have to remember his attributes that god is also a righteous god and because he is a righteous god you know and because his you know his his holiness has been disturbed because of because of sin uh, there has to be a penalty for the sin god can remove away the sin but there has to be a penalty for it to be done and who else can do that can a man now go back you know a lot many times we have a lot of resentment when we do some sin but uh, we do not understand the comp- the overall you know we do not uh, there, there are a lot of people who do a lot of sin as well some people really get i know are convicted once they do a sin there are some people who do not you know get convicted when they do sin the point is sometimes because of our evil uh, because of our depravity we do not understand the full extent of how we have you know how we have uh, you know uh, like um, how we uh, how we have uh, the, like you know Yeah, we have sinned against god we do not understand the full extent of our sin and that is the reason why most of the times we just say why can't just god forgive it but if you look at the, at the word of god the scriptures does say that blessed is he unto uh, whom the god does not impute any iniquity there is a way, way and this is how god has done it but then at the same time the sin that god that man may and that god, that man did uh, Uh, could not be forgiven could not be let go unless uh, there was a penalty that was to be paid for it and that penalty was paid by jesus on the cross and this is very important for us to understand is why was this this necessity 
because we sinned against god there's a lot of you know uh, wrong theology that comes in when we when a lot of people think that you know uh, jesus paid the price uh, to satisfy uh, the devil the devil has captured us and you know the devil has bound us no brothers and sisters this is very important for us to understand that christ paid the penalty christ paid the penalty of our sin to god himself he had because only he has the power to uh, to send us to heaven or to hell and based upon whether he is pleased and uh, and if you look at that uh, even when jesus uh, jesus came uh, not only did jesus die uh, for uh, the sin of adam but all the sins there on after that these are the original sin that adam committed but also after that there were sins in the flesh that we that adam committed later on because of the original sin and then also that we also commit like everything that has to be done so it was necessary that we needed an atonement and this atonement could not be provided by man it had to be provided by christ who uh, it was it had to be provided by christ because he was the perfect lamb of god and, and he, he was the perfect lamb of god and he was supposed to pay for it uh, and we we also look at the fact that you know uh, jesus not only did he die for our original sin but he also died for for our later sins which we would commit in our flesh and that is the reason why uh, the word of god says that uh, he became sin unto us uh, who knew no sin he had to live that perfect life he had to not only because once adam committed sins we all fell in a, because of one transgression we all fell into the sin so christ had to now fulfill the whole law and he had to live a perfect life when he came into the earth and that is the reason why it is very important for us to also recognize that when jesus says that you know when i uh, that you know i have not come here to destroy the law but i have come here to fulfill the law so yes we we did a sin and god requires a payment for our sin and that is the reason why uh, this also counters one of the questions is if christ has paid for our sin does it make sense that god again asks once again for a double payment this is what a lot of arminians think that they think that you know christ died for everybody for he paid the penalty of sin for everybody but then that is again limited to man you know reaching out to god asking for forgiveness uh, in a way what they are trying to uh, look at is uh, how man is still having a decision to be made whether you know he can accept the atonement of christ or not it is yes uh, and somehow they are trying to attack that uh, but so and this is where this is the reason why we see that you know the atonement was necessary the atonement could not be you know made by man and the next is if you look at it, what is the source what was the source of the atonement now if you look at it uh, see i was talking about you know uh, god was not uh, god was not surprised when adam sent and that is the reason why it is uh, the word of god says that you know because he knew that adam sinned adam when god created adam he created him holy and righteous holy but uh, he also ha- adam also had the propensity to sin there is a difference between the first and the second adam the first adam was holy he was without the original sin initially and then but he had the propensity to sin that means god knew that at some point man will sin at some point you know because man is not as perfect as god that's why he will sin and that is the reason why to glorify himself you know he sent uh, he prepared the way of salvation this is this is what the tulip gospel tries to you know identify that and try to put those points saying how god planned all of this and yeah. 
and that's why you know the word of god says that you know, and if you look at the most one of the most famous uh, verses which says john 3:16 says for god so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son so this atonement that was planned this atonement that was required because we uh, because we violated god's uh, law this atonement was planned was required and this atonement was also planned by god the father himself and that is the reason why even if you if if you look at it uh, john 3:16 says you know god sent his son and how did uh, before this we just look at the verse saying that you know blessed is see unto whom god does not impute any iniquity how did he god do that it was not because you know jesus raised up his hand and said uh, you know that he would do it but there was so much unity between god the father and god the son that what the father chose uh, as a part of uh, people who were elect uh, the son uh, then uh, you know chose to die for them to provide atonement for all the wrongs uh, for all the sins that they had done and that is the reason why we are saying that this atonement was very limited this atonement was limited to the elect only and that's the reason why when christ died on the cross he did not die uh, a vague death he did not die saying you know here is it I have died and I have done but rather he knew exactly for whom he died in when he died he exactly knew in his mind who he was dying for and that is where the focus was and if you look at uh, the gospels as well jesus keeps on saying that how he was steadfast he knew what he had come for what was his role when he came he knew that he had to pay that penalty this penalty was so grievous it was difficult for him yet christ for the love that he had for his elect the love that he had for the whole church if we have to say the elect of the church he endured the cross he died on the cross he uh, you know humbled himself and came as a man to pay for our sin and that is the reason why uh, we say that uh, that is the reason why the reformed faith always looks and says that god did not die a random death god did not die a random death but rather he knew whom he came to you know see uh, if you look at first timothy 115 uh, one timothy uh, 115 which is it talks about how christ came into the world for sinners to redeem the sinners First Timothy one fifteen. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And this is what Paul is also saying that you know he came Christ when he came into the world he did not came random. It was not a random you know decision where he said you know uh, uh, saying that uh, he came to seek. If you look at the if you look at the Gospels. Uh, and look at luke chapter as well it talks about how he came to it god's atonement was very specific god knew exactly because he came to save his elect let's see look i'm going to see you look at the reference but that's fine uh, and and that is the reason why if you look at uh, john the priestly prayer of john we look at you know jesus says i do not pray for the whole world but i pray for them and those who are out of the fold as well that they might be brought together jesus identifies himself i am the good shepherd and my sheep will hear my voice there is a specificity when he is talking about his people he is not talking in random words saying that you know you know i've come to die and i've done my part and i'm going away but rather christ is very specific his role is very much in fact he knew what exactly he had to do when even mary asked him to help him he says i am on my father's work this is my business this is my work i've come to do 
the will of the father and what was the will of the father the will of the father was to send christ so that he could pay uh, pay for atonement for our sins atone for our sins and this was again not a random set of people uh, who would then later choose to decide to say yes or no but rather he he knew who they were he knew exactly what they were and that is the reason why uh, uh, you know that christ when he hung up on the cross he said it is finished when he said it is finished it doesn't mean that there is a continuation to it but rather he said the work that has god the father has sent me to do uh, finished and if if you look if you uh, if you remember in the scripture he says you know that i have not lost any except the son of perdition in other sense uh, the, jesus is saying that he that he who he came for for a reason and that reason was to seek the save and the lost and that is the reason why he says to everyone he said repent and believe what repent and believe repent why because of our sin of what we have done and to believe in him that only he can now uh, save him and that is the reason why if you look even at the, uh, at the thief on the cross the thief on the cross why was he why was justified because uh, when the thief was on the cross he realized one thing that he was a sinner there is nothing in him that he could do he probably could uh, maybe the other thief might have tried to bargain with the soldiers to make him get out of the you know on the cross uh, so that you no know, maybe bargain with some money or something like that so that he, he could just run away from there but the thief on the cross he realized that he was a sinner he realized that jesus was god and if he is god then only he can have mercy enough to forgive him and that is the reason why he reaches out to him but that kind of faith cannot come from ourselves that kind of faith has to be given by god and that is the reason why uh, it was not a random way of christ you know forgiving but even christ came for that thief on the cross as well that's why he died for them and that is the reason why he said to him today thou shall be it mean paradise so if you look at that we're looking at you know why atonement was necessary why it was what was the source of it and when we look at the source of it it was christ and if you look at the nature of atonement you know we we see that you know the, it was based upon the perfect work of christ that christ lived a perfect life he fulfilled every demand of the law and that is the reason why when he said it is finished we believe that it was finished and that is the reason why we come to the fourth point that is the value of this atonement this atonement was so uh, so precious and that is what peter says he said you have not been redeemed by uh, gold and silver but by the precious blood of christ it was so precious it was not something which was just thrown just like that it was not a sacrifice where you know we could just uh, say that you know that uh, you know every drop of christ blood was uh, accounted for and was accounted only for his elect and not in a way uh, that other that the armenians believe that you know yes uh, you know some you know christ died for everybody but only some were saved not all were saved uh, which is which actually in a sense tries to uh, defame or you know minimize the value of this atonement it tries to minimize saying that you know Uh, you know anybody could have lived like like jesus anybody could have you know uh, atoned for his sin abundance the so there is the value of this atonement as nobody else could have paid for this it was so pure it was so perfect and that is why if you look at uh, the chapter of hebrews uh, where you know uh, the writer is exalting christ as the perfect priest uh, you know it is talking about how he is you know by his own blood he entered to the holy of the holies it was not like the sacrifice of the bulls and the goats where you know it has to be sacrificed every year but rather christ died once and for all and now he is seated on the right hand side of god and is interceding for us and this is one of the important points also if you look at it god is not interceding for the whole world 
he's not saying oh god please have mercy please save everybody but rather god is specific for his his only pleading for his elect and this is where we have to also realize our salvation see uh, what is our contribution our salvation and all this if you look at it it is god who does everything and we are very passive in our salvation in the sense that now god has enabled us to believe it but for those who do not believe they are active in their sin they are active in their unbelief so and that is the reason why there is a huge value even if you look at it uh, from that perspective where you know the sacrifices were made if you look at old testament uh, prophecy you will see that you no know, uh, whenever a uh, sacrifice was being made uh, the person he would bring the goat uh, the lamb home and then he before the sacrifice was made he would then uh, lay his hand on the sacrifice signifying that the sins of that particular person was going to the lamb and that sacrifice was specific to him not for the whole uh, uh, entirety and it is the same in terms of christ when christ lay on the cross he remembered each and every one of his elect saying that for them he is taking this it's again refutes the uh, the idea that you know christ died for everybody and and but unfortunately a lot of people you know they say they have issues with this one because a uh, lot of people will think that you know god is uh, is probably not efficient what we are saying is that god is efficient but it is only sufficient for his elect and that is the reason why we hold on to this a uh, limit in atonement because in this it shows the love of god towards us it shows that god has loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son he loved us so much that christ even though if you remember the garden of gethsemane we realize how difficult it was for jesus to go through the cross it shows the preciousness of this atonement this atonement was is, is not something which we can be taken lightly ah uh, yeah so what christ died for us no christ died for you, for the elect of god and that is the reason because people do not hold on to it uh the, there is a lot of long, uh, wrong teaching that goes on in 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 the armenian camp where they say just believe that christ died for you and you will be saved that is not what the bible talks about but rather the bible says believe in him and how can you and why will you believe in him you cannot believe him unless you don't realize that you can never that, that unless you do not realize that you have offended god if you unless you do not realize that you cannot now pay an atonement for this offense you cannot pay from from your own selves no matter how much you know you know uh, it, how much you know the most you will be you might be having no ma- no ma- and, and that's the reason why a lot of people when they do commit any kind of sin they try to burn their selves or burn their bodies as well to show the remorse for the sin but this will not please god a perfect sacrifice only can please the oh, please god and that perfect sacrifice was done not for everybody so that people can trample this preciousness precious blood of christ but every drop that was shed on the on the cross was was properly accounted for now definitely there is uh, there are a lot of uh, issues that people raise because of the, they are saying why are you saying why are you limiting god why are you put, putting a god in a box saying you know, he only died for certain people but when we look at it actually it is not we who are limiting the atonement of christ it is actually the armenians who are limiting in fact who are vilifying or who are uh, lowering the the precious of the atonement of god what they are saying is yes christ died for you but he did not complete his work on the cross they are saying that you know uh, yes he died for you he lived a perfect life for you he died for everybody but still god is dependent upon you to accept him 
still god is dependent upon you to say yes i receive you i accept you and this is the, uh, and so what we are doing is uh, what they are doing is they're limiting the uh, the effectiveness of christ sacrifice it is dependent upon you, upon us and then and that is the reason and, and and they're also saying that what jesus did was when he said it is finished he said i did my part now it is up to you no that is not how god chose god was not surprised when we when adam sinned he knew exactly you know that adam will sin and then it they we would require an atonement for it and god like a skillful master builder realized that they that man could never you know live a holy life and that is the reason why god planned all of this together and uh, in fact um, when uh, uh, a lot of armenians also say you know if the, the precursor to you know uh, having a wrong view of atonement is having a universal understanding of atonement they say we have universal understanding but what they are saying that they are saying that when christ died on the cross he only made a way for salvation he did not actually achieve salvation for his people because and that is the reason why it is dependent upon now you to save yourself which is so much contrary to what the scripture says if you believe that yes christ paid the perfect price he paid the price for our sin then why would god then again require another set of you know something that we have to do at our end to ensure that the atonement is then now spread unto you so looking at this we can say that it's the armenians who actually limit atonement rather than we trying all we are trying is all we try to say is that you know the atonement of god is uh, it's not uh, quantitative in nature but it is qualitative in nature as james white puts it he says that you know it is the quality of the atonement for which we you know uh, we for which we are watching for saying that it was only limited only for the selected and not in in other way where you know the atonement for the was for the whole world that is why the reform faith holds on to the limited atonement um, that's all i had to, to say i hope this was blessing to you uh with a gilbert if you want to add something or if anybody has any comments or questions we can take that can you hear me yes brother limited uh, limited atonement is also known as particular atonement because those who do not like limited atonement can use the word particular atonement because it is only only meant for the elect as ravi has said there are a couple of verses like in john 10 my sheep will know my voice and i lay down my life for the sheep remember one thing a goat can never become a sheep and many a, here is a here is a mistake many a times we try to make the goat to behave like a sheep by telling who oh, please do all these things which is coming out of the flesh they will always be the good and uh, i hope i'm clear on that the sheep will only hear his voice and the sheep the spirit of god dwelling in, in the heart of the sheep will drive the sheep to do what god wants or her to do secondly there is another verse i think matthew 10:28 also he says he came to give his life as a ransom for men and uh, it's not for all it's not for every everyone it is only only for his people and um, on matthew 20 28 i'm not sure i will tell you the verse and then matthew 121 it says god came jesus came to say all the people yeah it's matthew 20 28 and matthew 1 matthew 1 21 did jesus come to save all the people or his people he came to save his people 
So the scripture is abundant where it says Christ came to save his people, his elect, the sheep, never the goats. A sheep cannot be, not, can never become a goat. That is an assurance that we have. What is the assurance of our salvation? It is God who has chosen us before the foundation of the world. It is Christ who died for us and, and paid the full price and satisfied the wrath of God. And we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. This is the assurance of our salvation. And we rest completely on the work of the Trinity and completely on the person, the work of Christ for my redemption. And uh, uh, I, I just want to add one more thing. People also say, I have a problem with this paper, where people say, oh, uh, the, um, the blood of Christ is efficacious or sufficient for the whole world, but he saves only his elect. No, the blood of Christ is meant only for the elect, the number that God has written in the Lamb's book. Nothing more, nothing more. It's only for those for whom, no, for whom the Father has chosen. Christ has died for them in the Holy Spirit has given the heart of 